Hi, y'all. I got back from my scuba diving vacation last night at 2 a.m. And it's really hot here in Central Texas. 97 degrees right now. It's the middle of the afternoon. Clear, sunny day, no clouds in the sky. And I want to find out with you. I have not been out to the solar shed since I got back. I want to find out with you. <laughs> how the solar shed is operating without any air conditioning. I have the two inverters that are running that 12 kW of solar panels. They're inside the building. The building is closed up. If you remember, I built it with good insulation. It's got a metal roof on it and it's up against the rainwater tank, which should give some thermal mass and should help moderate the temperatures inside the building. But a lot of discussion was made in the comments section about how the inverters, when they're on a sunny day like this, are gonna create so much heat that it would take a tremendous amount of air conditioning to overcome the heat from these inverters. Now, I don't agree, and we're gonna find out together. I have not been out here yet. I've been gone for a month. It's been hot, and it's a hot day today. So, I do have air conditioning in this building, and we're going to find out together what the temperature is. I'm going to go in and turn on the lights. Oh, ho, 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 ho. this is going to be good, y'all. Come on in. Let me shut the door. But it feels nice and cool in here. You can see the inverters are running and this one is producing 3,100 watts of power and this one is producing 5,300 watts of power. So we're running right around 9,000 watts of power that's being produced. Just before we left, for the trip, we got some painting done on these shelves. Now, let's see what the temperature is because these units make a little warmth. And the thought is from some people that the amount of waste heat that these generate is tremendous. Eventually, these will be the inverters that manage this system. And they're similar in their efficiency to these inverters and I'm going to add a little bit of solar, so there will be a little extra heat produced. But I have this temperature sensor, and we're going to find out what kind of heat is in this building. So when I shoot this wall, 83 degrees. When I shoot the roof, 84 degrees. When I shoot the roof right above the inverters, 87 degrees, because heat is coming up off of these 91 right above the inverters. 95, 98 above the inverter that's putting out more power than this one. So right above that inverter, the roof is 90 degrees where the heat is coming up and hitting that roof. The floor, 79 degrees. This temporary, this uh, uh, wall that all this equipment is mounted to, it's in the middle of the building, right? So it's off of the exterior wall and it's reading 83 degrees. So basically you've got around mid eighties in this room in the middle of the afternoon when these things are producing heat full tilt boogie. The concrete wall that has rainwater on the other side of it is 81 degrees. That's producing the cooling effect 78 degrees further down because right now the water level in here is right about here and above that water level it's going to be warmer 81 and down where the water is 78 degrees 77 degrees okay so this 77 degree concrete wall with the water that's a lot of thermal mass and what that's doing is it's absorbing the heat from the rest of the building Here's an exterior wall reading 81 degrees. And all of these, all of these loads from the, from the 
even though it has insulation, there's still a thermal load on it. And all these loads from the sun beating down on this roof and beating on these walls is coming through the insulation. And the, the insula where it's coming through the insulation, you've got 81 degree walls in all these locations, 81, 82 degrees, okay? And then as you get higher up, the roof, now there's a little more insulation in the roof. It's a uh, four inches of polyisocyanurate. And so that's uh, 83 degrees on the roof. And then right above the units, like I showed you, is warmer. That heat is being absorbed by the thermal mass of this rainwater tank. And it is slowly putting heat into the water. However, that heat is also being dissipated out of the water into the ground. It's getting some load up from above. The, rain, the uh, rainwater tank is protected from direct sun from the solar array, as you have seen before. And so it's working admirably. It's, uh, there's no real reason that the temperatures we're seeing in here are moderate enough that there's no real reason to run this air conditioning yet. Now it's early May, it's gonna be 100, 100 and something degrees later, and the tank is gonna warm up over the summer and produce less cooling effect because that water will eventually be 85 degrees perhaps, we'll see. I'm gonna keep you up to date on that. We're not gonna produce a whole lot more heat than we do now because even when the, um, even when the sun is out and I add more solar panels, it's gonna be a rare event that on a sunny day like this, that those panels are producing all of their capacity because the batteries will get filled up and then it'll ramp down how much uh, capacity is being run through the, uh, the inverters from the solar panels and some heat will be produced by putting energy into the batteries and some heat will be produced by taking heat back out of the batteries. So we will eventually want this air conditioner, but the notion that, these, that this system is gonna create an overwhelming amount of heat that can't be managed with a minimal amount of air conditioning, I think we're showing that to not be the case. There is a video I made last January that showed what this, how this building uh, performed in cold temperatures. It was freezing outside, below freezing outside, and it was 60 degrees, 62 degrees inside here. So this insulated building, this high performance building, and this thermal mass of the rainwater tank is doing a great job most of the year of, of protecting from really low temperatures or really high temperatures in this building. Um, we will eventually need the air conditioner, but right now we've got a pretty good compromise set setup where between the high performance building and the heat coming out of this thermal mass wall is doing the job on its own and we don't actually need the air conditioner yet. And it felt really cool when I walked in here. These surfaces are saying that it's around 80, 81 degrees, 82 degrees, but it felt really cool when I walked in. So that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and start making some videos now that I'm back. I've got a video that I'm gonna make on some batteries that I was sent and uh, I'm gonna test them for you. And, they ha and we have some, some special arrangements to uh, make it possible for you to protect yourself from any risk if you uh, work with this, uh, with this supplier. There are some other videos that I've promised you which I will now be getting underway. The, the dive vacation was amazing. We had a great time. Uh, made a couple of videos while I was there and really missed doing these. So please like and subscribe. All right, I said it, I needed to say it. Please like and subscribe. And thank you for watching this one. Y'all have a good day and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.